Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you want to be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you want to be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just want to be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub, and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content, and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college-level course, it's better than a college-level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course, thank you for watching this and for your support, and thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. What up? Happy post-holidays, everybody. Testing audio level. Yep, that looks fine. Let's put just a little bit of the music. The Baldur's Game music in the background. <coughs> We'll mix in some Hades and Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Nothing too loud. Hello, Maxac Six, Carlos, Matej, Koyar, Marceline, and Proj Corp. I'm drinking tea, I'm drawing. Let's get that out of the way. Move this back over here. Make sure I can see that. All right. Let's uh, do a little bit of drawing. Hello, Cynthia White. Can everybody hear me okay? Sound good, everything look good. Everything looks good on my end. Let's draw a little bit. Camera up a smidge. Oh, 
hope you all had a restful holiday, if you're in a part of the world where this is a holiday. If you're in one of the spheres where this is a holiday. If you got to rest and recuperate. You look nice today, Stephen Rosata says Karem. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Autumn Rose says, Stephen, your face. You look, you're 12, facial hair. Stephen, your face, your face. Don't worry, it won't be long till it's back. <clears throat> It will be back soon enough. You see the New York Times is suing OpenAI for using their stuff in ChatGPT. That's good. That's real good. I like that. That's nice. Good news as far as I'm concerned. If the music gets too loud or anything, just let me know. Should be very quiet, but uh, you never know. Sometimes some la songs get louder than others. I've got it real low though. Happy late Christmas, Stephen. Happy late Christmas. Cri Happy late Christmas to you, Frathesith. Frathesized. Frathesinisherst. For how much, says Carlos, they have not, uh, they did not ask for a specific number so far in the complaint. Maybe that will come out or they will change it. But um, if I remember correctly from what I read, they did say uh, billions in statutory and actual damages. So they're estimating the damages in the billions, but um, they didn't give a particular number for how much they're trying to get. Love the sound of the blender. That's fortunate because most people can't stand it. Seems most people, it drives them absolutely crazy. Hope you and your family are well and had a nice holiday. We did. My wife's been super busy at work lately, so it was, she was busy right up until like Christmas Eve. So it was really nice to actually see her pause and have nothing to do for a couple days there. And that's all of us, just a couple days. Now she's right back to it.
Do, 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 do. Hello, Chris Maycock. Nearly spilled tea all over the place there. I don't know how the hell I managed to fumble that. Let me just keep my tea over on that side of the disc. Hello, Stephen. Ever felt like you've been drawing the same things, taking commissions of only things you are confident in and always staying in the comfort zone unknowingly? Uh, yeah, for sure. It's definitely something to address. The comfort zone gets a bad rap. I mean, most artists, the stuff that you're going to be known for is going to be done in your comfort zone. So the comfort zone is actually very important career-wise. But... Um, yeah, for your personal growth, you want to be careful to not just linger in there forever. But as long as you're aware of it, you're going to be okay. But yeah, the unknowing, sort of like traveling in a daze for months at a time before you realize like, oh God, I haven't been really pushing myself to do the things I actually want to do. That's always a problem. But you're going to be all right. You sound like you're aware of it. But yeah, sometimes the comfort zone gets a bad rap. It's like if you were really trying to be out of your comfort zone all the time, you wouldn't be someone who draws. You'd be a much more strange sort of... There's no good word for this, but like a, a conceptual modern artist, you know? And by modern, I do mean contemporary, not the actual academic definition of modern, which has a particular set of years associated with it. You would be a contemporary, conceptual artist doing all sorts of weird things. You wouldn't begin every piece of art assuming that for that message you should be doing a drawing. You'd be, you know, hiring bees. You'd be renting bees, I guess. Well, you might be hiring them, depending on your viewpoint on bee sentience, but... You'd be renting bees and covering them with encaustic paints and letting them buzz their way all over, you know, thin marble slabs that you quarried from some haunted place in some godforsaken part of the world. And you'd give it a fancy name and put it up in a very experiential and performative focus museum. And the next time you wouldn't do the next piece, you wouldn't do anything like that. You'd do a completely new kind of a thing because, yeah, you're always way out of your comfort zone, always struggling to make it about what the piece needs and not what you like doing or are even good at. Hi, Nick. Hi, Dino Blaster. Dino Blaster, Dino Blaster. Love some random creature anatomy drawing. Oh, ye is the best. How do I stray away from reference and draw from the mind? There's no how. You just do it. And you got to get it out of your head that there needs to be a how. You know, you're just holding yourself back. There is no how. You just put it on the calendar on this day or from this hour to this hour, I don't use reference. I just draw from my head and have fun. Hello, it is what it is. Charlie says, hope everybody had a great time this Christmas. Yeah, me too. 
Is there a B union making sure they have a living wage? Is this a hypothetical world? It is not hypothetical. Someone out there is covering the bees in, un in encaustic paint for sure. This is Simon Couture, Baron of Bees, says, I do that. Yeah, I bet. Babylon 55 says, Sativa or Indica? Uh, I guess if it was going to be one or the other, it'd be Indica. But weed, weed doesn't treat me nice. <laughs> so whatever is a... Uh, I need the gentlest thing. The headiness of sativa is, uh, for me, a guarantee that I'm going to have a bad time. Steven, for their first graphic tablet, would you recommend an intermediate traditional artist, a decent size no display tablet, or a small screen display tablet? Um, I think for most people, it's good to start with one, whatever the cheapest option is to even find out if you like working digitally. Um, I think a lot of traditional artists will find that they don't actually enjoy. If you're traditional first, then that's what you've spent most of your time doing. Yeah, I think a lot of people will find they don't enjoy the process of working digitally. Um, so I would discover that on the cheap or borrow a tablet from someone first and see what you see what you find. If you're well, the thing is, for most artists, now I'm not like this, but I do think this is the case for most artists, they would be happier just using digital for what it's best at, which is making changes, doing, um, doing quick iterations, doing variations, doing edits, um, and doing the actual drawing traditionally, because that's the best drawing experience you can have. Um, so in that case, you don't need anything that is really precise. You can just keep drawing with paper and you can use the cheapest possible graphics tablet with no screen to do um, add color, do variations, make edits, clean things up. Because all of that stuff doesn't require a lot of really tight hand-eye coordination. I feel like most people, if you need a screen tablet, you already know it. Like you have a job doing art, you have to do line work over and over and over again digitally. Like you know you need a screen tablet. Um, and if you're confused about if that's the case, I think again, for most, if you don't work at a studio, if you don't work on heavy duty files every day, I think for most people, um, an iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil is the best screen tablet um, has the best drawing experience and um, the the problem with that is that you can't do huge files you can't do super complex files complex files because you don't have access to the full version of photoshop clip studio whatever it is what have you procreate is an excellent program but it's not um it is not it can't do huge files very well so um, yeah, if you just want to draw, you just want to paint, think Procreate is enough for most people. And um, you do that on iPad Pro. Again, I really, I really advise people not buy Cintiqs. Like, don't buy it. Don't, like, you know if you need a Cintiq. Don't buy it. Don't, don't buy it until you're forced to buy one. You know, it's not a great, not a great, it's not a great product. It's a very niche 
professional product. There's much better ways to work unless you are on a deadline and you're doing line drawing after line drawing after line drawing after line drawing. If you're a storyboard artist, if you're an animator, a cell, you know, a frame by frame animator, I would tell you immediately go get some version of a screen tablet. But if you don't do that stuff, I would hold off for as long as possible. Mizubi says, should I refrain from going pro as an artist if I'm not tech savvy? I'm low key monkey brain when it comes to technology. It's all black magic to me. Um, no, I mean, it's just, I mean, some amount of tech proficiency is gonna be necessary if you want certain kinds of commercial jobs like um, 
concept artist or something like that. Like there's just no getting around that, you know, if you're gonna be a professional concept artist, 95% of those people are going to have to dedicate, dedicate at least some amount of their time regularly to learning new programs that come up and things like that, new workflows. Um, but beyond that, uh, you don't really need to be tech savvy to go pro as an artist at all. You know, you can just you can just make sure that you go into a sector where that's not really necessary. You know, going pro just means that you're well. I mean, people can't agree on what going pro means, but um, the way I generally think of it as is that you're making your living off of your art, and there's every kind of way to do that. You know, you could just do traditional commissions and make a living off of that if you get popular enough and you don't need to know any tech, so. Black Assam says, happy holidays. Steven Form question, why is rendering light values much trekkier than rendering darker ones? Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons, but the most obvious one is just that our mediums, if you're doing pencil, you put down dark, you don't put down light. So um, that's always gonna slant it one way or the other. Black, didn't you send me an email before the holidays um, telling me that you got an art job? If I'm thinking of, if I have that right, congratulations. I'm sorry that I didn't respond, but uh, I, I basically don't respond to any emails. <laughs> I just don't have the time. But I'm always hardened when people send me good news like that. I give them all a skim, but I really don't have time to sit and respond to everything these days, unfortunately. Oliver T on theme says, hey, Steven, been a big fan for a while. Wanted to drop in a message to say that I got my first full-time art job lately designing backgrounds for animated TV series. Wouldn't have gotten this far alone. Congratulations, Oliver T. Big congratulations to you. That's a great thing. Have fun with it. Enjoy. That's fantastic. Anytime anyone can make a living off of their art, it's a personal miracle, so. <laughs> It's a big deal. I'm very happy for you. DJ Car Charisma. Charisma? Charisma. Hi, Steven. Is it weird that I wanted to learn to draw, but I have no defined artistic goals? Like, I'm passionate about developing the skills, but I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Um, well, there's a difference. Let's make a distinction here between weird and unusual. I don't think it's unusual. I think a lot of people do that, actually. Um, you just... You love the process of drawing and it excites you 
that you can improve at it in a pretty linear way. Um, so that's not unusual. Um, it's maybe a little weird, but I think it gets weird. It's not weird to begin with. I think it gets weird because even though that's the kind of artist you are, a lot of us take on accidentally a bunch of self-scrutiny and critique and things that we think we're supposed to do that are really more from the realm of people who do have a goal with their art. Um, and that's when it gets weird. That's when you're sort of causing problems for yourself that really don't need to be there. Um, so if that's really how you feel, and you know most people aren't self-aware enough to be able to put it into words that that's what they're doing, that they're just wanting to develop the skills but they don't have a goal and they don't really know what they wanna do with it, there's nothing wrong with that, just own it. And then don't walk around being jealous that like, other artists have these kinds of jobs or this kind of product or this kind of fan base because they made this kind of story. It's like, that's where it's a problem. It's like, of course you don't have that. You That wasn't what you were arcing towards for years and years and years. You're just trying to improve at drawing. So as long as you don't do something like that to yourself, I don't think it's weird. Uh, and it's certainly not unusual. A lot of people wind up doing that. But lots of people make that mistake, you know? They, they spend all their time building the skills and then they sit there resentful that they don't have what other artists have. And it's like, did you do any of the other things besides skill that are necessary to have those things? And the answer is, al is always no. It's like, all right, well, that's that. Built a good following on social media, but I don't know how to progress from there. What should I do? Mm -hmm. sell, sell them essential oils or something like that.
Gorobard says, hello, Steven. Are you drawing the kind of bats that I throw at people or the other kind of bats I throw at people? I'm drawing the kinds of bats you throw at people. Manucci says, I can't believe I finally arrived to a live stream. <laughs> Thank you, I Nocturne. Thank you. Yeah, we are soon in 2024. It's kind of messed up. Kind of messed up. I gotta get back in the groove after the holidays, man. I gotta slip back into the habit. My body's too full of cookies. Hello. What's wrong? What is it? I have nothing to offer you. It's too early for dinner. Go on. Go to bed. Do you have any goals for 24? Mm. The total model collapse of at least one AI model. The method is up for grabs. Don't need to be my doing. This is less a goal and more a wish. So that's the first thing I want to see in 2024. Total model collapse. Algorithmic disgorgement. A debilitating lawsuit, something like that. Hey Steven, what are any art goals you have for 2024? Um, I don't have any, I wouldn't say. Not They're not specifically year goals. I mean, I've got my stuff that I'm working on, you know, I've got my project with my friend Joe. Uh, I'm going to try to put together another course, but um, those are just, I don't consider those sort of resolution goals or anything like that. They're just, they're the next things on the to-do list, you know? <laughs> Did Santa bring you anything, Mr. Zapata? Uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Finally got some waterproof boots. I really needed those. Hey Steven, what would you say to an artist who's trying to develop better consistency? I'm creating a 2D concept art portfolio and I don't wanna to spend too much time using 3D software. Consistency. Um, well, for a concept art portfolio, the consistency is not about personal consistency. It's about the style of the project. 
consistency. Um, and that is, that comes down to the principles of design. You know, that's um, a series of yes or no questions about how you've art directed that particular project. You know, the design language for every aspect. Um, this must all sound crazy unless you have a, a, a basic introduction to how things are designed. But um, if you're doing a concept art portfolio, if, if you're doing it well, right? If you're not just, right? the mistake a lot of people make is they think a concept art portfolio is like, all right, well, I've seen guys with guns, so let me just draw a guy with a gun, right? If you're not, that's a bad idea. <laughs> um, what you wanna do is you want to actually do an example of a real design job, which is to say there's tons of criteria and hard points. And you're not just trying to make any random thing that looks good, you're trying to make something that looks good and fulfills the design criteria of that particular project. All projects have an art direction. They have a language that is theirs and not another project's. And the nitty gritty of a design language is yes or no, not yes or no, but like clear answers to how each principle of design is used within the whole project and then various kinds of content within the project, character, environment, prop, things like that. So it's in this project, we use rhythm this way, not that way. We use contrast this way, not that way. We use scale this way, not that way. In the characters, we use color this way, not that way. We use rhythm this way, not that way. We use values this way, not that way. All of the statements that can be made like that about the project produce consistency in that you have an internal consistency to the project where you don't um, where you don't violate those rules throughout the various uh, content matters throughout the various subject matters that were within the project that'll create internal consistency and then being clear on those things is what will allow you to make a theoretical design document in this case your portfolio um, based on the concepts and um, that you could, if you were an art director, you could hand that design document off to a, another artist and they would know how to work within the style of the product. And um, if, you have, if, if anyone out there just has no idea what the hell I'm talking about, it's going to be very hard to get a, a concept art job if you don't know what, what the hell I'm talking about with everything that I'm saying there. So if any of that is horribly confusing, uh, it's time to do a lot of Googling, a lot of Googling.
the pains of doing graphic design to assemble or present pieces in a portfolio, I think is harder than coming up with pieces itself. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It's, it's my most dreaded part of doing um, anything. It's not as fun as just doing the drawing. First Vita says, I spilled an unknown substance on a finished piece. It hurts. How could it be unknown? You don't know what you spilled? How many things could it be? Goodbye, Seth, who says, I certainly envy people who have a knack for elegant layouts and design in their portfolio work. Yeah, it's a big plus. It's a big plus. Still doing your comics as Drawn Sword Graphics? Yep. glare coming off of really white paper like this can get to be a lot. Ooh, it can get to be a lot. Subadu says, hello, Stephen. I'm glad I catch a live stream. It's been a while for me. I'm doing form for imagination. Wisest decision of my art career. Nice. Happy to hear that. I'm glad you're liking it. I'm very, very glad. May every course you take be so helpful.
Funiarinpa says, were you always patient and able to work on the same drawing for hours or is that something you had to develop? I had to develop it. Some people, um, some people don't have to develop it. They just naturally are that way. I was not, I had to develop it. Chris Vita says, Steven, spill the beans already. What drawing entity did you sold your, sold your soul to for your incredible talent? Man, it was only that easy. Dude, if I had sold my soul, I would expect to be way better than I am now. <laughs> I would need to be assured of much greater returns than this meager talent for my soul, for my eternal soul. Steven, you should play Divinity 2 main theme for us to experience true epicness. It is great. There's there's a lot of streams in the archive where uh, I'm playing the Divinity 2 soundtrack, so I'm not going to do it now, but you can go back and find those and see how much chat loves it. Did you ever play Shadow of the Colossus? Yeah, one of my favorite games. On the tiny little CRT TV in my childhood bedroom on the PS2. Who would have thought that such a small, low resolution screen could lead to such a big world? Does anyone have a great illustrator who uses gray value alcohol markers to recommend? Um, a lot of comics people use them. It's a great effect. Uh, Adam Hughes, I think, is big on doing grayscale with Copics. There's another one. Shit. A Brazilian guy. He's really pop popular. Damn, someone in chat probably knows who I'm talking about. Is his last name Pena, maybe? I feel like he does a lot of grayscale marker stuff. Also a comics guy. But there's tons in comics. You won't have any trouble finding. In comics world, you won't find any, you won't have any trouble finding people who do finished pieces with grayscale markers. Froggy says, Mr. Steven, congratulations on resisting a whole year of us asking you to draw anime waifus with no success. And I would just never do such a thing. Not even to joyfully indulge my audience. There's just, there's some things you shouldn't even joke about, you know? Every day when I wake up, I pray to God to give me the strength to resist the urge to cave to my audience and draw anime waifus. There before the grace of God go I.
Oh, you know what I've been doing on the, uh, like, uh, over the holiday and, uh, like, the week before the holiday? I've been doing a lot of VR sculpting. In Substance Modeler. It's been a lot of fun. I've been doing, checking out the VR stuff that arises on and off for years, back since Tilt Brush and... Was Tilt Brush, did Tilt Brush come out like 2015, 2016, something like that? No, it must have been before 2016. So maybe Tilt Brush was like 2014, 2015. Anyway, I tried Tilt Brush like as soon as it came out or very soon after. And uh, I've been trying VR stuff on and off all the years ever since. It's getting better and better and better. Substance Modeler is based on um, Medium, which was its own thing, and then Adobe bought it. But Medium was pretty cool. I tried Medium years ago. I didn't really have the setup for it at the time, but I had some friends who had good setups for it, and they let me try it. I was super impressed. And uh, now it's been turned into Modeler, Substance Modeler. Or at least it's... Substance Modeler is its sort of successor. Man, it is so fun. I like it a lot. It's gonna get pretty interesting. I'm not great at it, but it's great sandbox time. It's just fun to do, you know? You know how much I love that. Boxer Wing says, that sounds really cool. I got a set of new to me polychromos colored pencils. All people say now about my drawings is bright. <laughs> a lot of saturated color. I don't make people think it's bright. You know, there's a bit of physiological hard wiring in the human eye that makes us interpret increased saturation as increased brightness, so. Most of the, most of the pencils and a colored pencil like set that you get or something are gonna be more on the saturated side, so it'll be perceived as bright. Hello, Lasser. Cynthia says, thanks for the drawing and random thoughts. It cheered me up this afternoon. I'm very glad. I am very glad. Xlisser says, I love creating creatures like, I love creating creatures like, I also love your style of anatomy. How can I start practicing anatomy? Just crack an anatomy book and keep it open next to you while you draw and see what you can integrate. You know, if, if you find that it improves your drawings and excites you more than it hinders you, then you can go through a period where you do some focused anatomical study where um, you sort of free draw less and focus on studying anatomy more. It's, um, the thing about anatomy, strictly speaking, is that it's not necessarily a drawing thing. It's not an artistic pursuit. It, um, you can learn everything there is to know about anatomy in a medical textbook that has zero pictures. So however interested you may be, however much you can bear to pursue it on that level, you can transfer it to drawing. But um, I wouldn't start there. I would start basic. Just keep an anatomy book, an anatomy reference guide open next to you while you draw and kind of naturally see what happens. If you need a reference or a recommendation, uh, I always recommend Frank Delavier's Strength Training Anatomy. That's not the best anatomy textbook because it doesn't explain muscle insertions of what the muscles do, really. I mean, if you read the text and like the explanations of certain exercises, yeah, it is actually telling you some of what they do. 
but um, it doesn't put it in artistic language or focus on that. Um, but it is the best just in terms of the sheer amount of diagrams and the various angles that you get. So usually no matter how you're drawing a limb, the figure, whatever, you can flip through that book and you can find some diagram of a workout where it's just about in a similar enough position where you can transfer some info. It is what it is, says Steven. Do you prefer traditional or digital art or both? I prefer traditional, but there, I, I do, I'd rather draw traditional almost all of the time, but I would rather make edits and do variations digital almost all of the time. So you, know, you play to the strengths, right? But um, I don't find digital drawing to be a, a pleasant experience. I, I got good at it because I did it a lot, but it's not fun. It doesn't feel good. If it, it, it'll feel fun for the first couple hours of a drawing, um, but after that, you know, you're just, you're rubbing glass for hours and you're staring at a light bulb for hours. It's not a pleasant experience, not for me. Um, but I tolerate it. I, 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 don't, I don't expect it to feel great um, the way that traditional drawing does. Traditional drawing, it can feel pleasant moment to moment for 100 hours. That's something digital just can't do for me. So I just have different expectations from them, for them. Have you ever had an art date with someone? I have no idea how to ask someone to draw together. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not talking romantic, right? You're, you're using the word date just to mean like, yeah, let's hang out and draw. Tons, tons. Some, some artists don't, um, they kind of shy away from that because they think critique might be involved. Just make clear like this isn't about, there's no pressure, you know, there's no expectations. We're not trying to do some fucking boot camp here. You know, we're just hanging out, drinking coffee, drawing, and we're not gonna judge each other. <laughs> it's like, if you can establish that, I think you'll get um, many more artists interested. Um, don't, I wouldn't brand it as a, like, oh, we're gonna do a critique group and focus on getting better and blah. It's like, you, that configuration is going to work with, outside of a job, is going to work with five, people in your life, maybe. That is such a, it's art, you know? A, 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 unless you're a, a totally jaded professional who has disconnected your heart from the work and you're doing, you know, you're like a hard-nosed freelancer and all that. Um, Nine, 99% of people are not that, 99% of artists are not that. And so their art comes from a personal place. So the idea that they would take critique comfortably and easily and let it flow off of them like water off a duck's back is just sort of an unrealistic, almost precious view of what artists would be able to do. Uh, you should, if, if you pitch artistic friendships to people through that lens, you should expect that 99% of the artists that you pitch that to are gonna bounce off. Like, what do they know about you? Why should they listen to your crits? <laughs> like, what, 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 there's just very little good reason for them to get tied up with someone like that. Um, so you should instead keep it much more open-ended. Um, I personally basically never offer a crit unless it is, specifically asked of me and it is an appropriate context. And I mean both. I, I turn down critiques all the time. I tell people straight to their face, I, I don't think this is an appropriate context. I won't critique you. I, I just don't, I don't think, don't think most artists, myself included, handle a crit well unless it's in just the right place, in just the right place from just the right person. When you find one of those five people who you're gonna have that great relationship with, 
It's a very valuable thing. You should cherish those people. Vina gives me 100 ARS. I don't know how much that is, but I'm going to assume it's a ton. Thank you so much, Vina. Vina says, I love your work, Steven. I hope you have a happy new year. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you for the new house that you bought me. Uh, probably 100 ARS is enough to buy a house, so. Gonna have a home pretty soon, yeah. Steven, while I'm designing, I usually come to a point where I see myself staying in my comfort zone and using the same shape contrast pattern, though I realize it, I can't break out of it. Any advice? Um, usually the only thing, usually the only thing that's gonna robustly drag you out of that over and over again is you need clearer hard points. You, maybe this is too meta an answer, but think of it this way. And I'm, I'm focusing on the word designing here. If you're really designing, then the only way you could wind up in your comfort zone, reusing shapes and contrast patterns, is that you don't have a clear enough idea about what this environment, character, vehicle, prop is. It's just, if, if, to give an example, how the fuck could you draw Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy to look the same? It would be almost impossible for anyone who is a fan of those books to not make them look extremely different and have very different colors on them, right? For obvious reasons, very different facial shapes for obvious reasons, right? There's tons of hard points that as much as you may want to stay in your comfort zone, it just makes it impossible. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so if you have found yourself returning to a comfort zone, it's because you do not understand your characters, whether you're making them up yourself or using source material. You don't understand your characters on the level that you understand even popular figures like Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy. So nine times out of 10, the solution is you need to go back to understanding what is the actual design criteria here instead of, I think I'm drawing something cool. You know, that's, that's always what messes people up. And we're, if you had said, Stephen, while I'm illustrating, while I'm doing illustrations, cool style pictures and things like that, I'm having this problem. That would give me a very different, I would give a very different answer than the word you use, which is that you were designing, right? Des design means a very particular thing to me because I'm, I'm an entertainment designer. I went to school for that. That's what I've worked in for years. That's how I've made all my art money. So I, I have very different, um, uh, not all of it, a, a bunch of it, but um, I've, I've made, I, I have, design means a very particular thing to me in my head. And, and most design work is done to, you have an exhausting amount of hard points. You know, you've got someone else has written a script, a book, a something, a narrative, right? You almost never work just completely open-ended. There's usually, I'm just trying to keep it as general as possible, there's thousands of words to read before you get to drawing, usually. There's days of research to do. There's images to compile, references to collect. Um, so, so many hard points that would just really prevent you from doing the same old thing over and over again. Hold on a sec, let me make sure this isn't my wife texting me. Oh shit, it uh, I'm not gonna jump off just yet, but it turns out my wife was coming home early. So she's probably gonna burst in here any minute now <laughs> based on the time of those texts. So just uh, excuse me when she gets here and my dog freaks out. I'll have to mute and all that. Please do not say bad words. My mom checks my phone. I'm sorry.
what would happen if the entire creative team just decided to wing it? It just doesn't happen. It, it doesn't, there is, there is no way to, I don't know what that would, how it would be possible. It's like, if you're working on a project, at some point, winging it has become focusing. There, there's, the, the, it's like, if, if you're not building up design decisions, you're sort of just every day starting from scratch and creating different projects. There, there is no, you can wing it for a week. You can even start with the artist, right? You can tell the art, you can tell the writers, don't come into work for a month and just have the artist make pictures and keep a blue sky. But then when you bring the writers in, they're gonna look at the pictures and they're gonna stitch everything together. And then you've got hard points again. There's, there's no avoiding. If you're really designing something, there is no way to avoid that it is paring down the possibility space. That's just what it means to, to design something. If you kept expanding the possibility space unendingly, you would just be, at a certain point, you would just be creating multiple projects, project after project after project after project. Focus lost. Uh, let me see if I can bring it back. I can barely see myself, let me see. Okay, now I'm in focus, right? Am I? Fuck, I can barely tell, I know I moved the wrong thing. I'm very big now. <laughs> Triple X gives a hundred, is that a hundred, what is that? Is that a hundred euros? What's the exchange rate for a hundred euros? I'm gonna assume that's probably like 50 cents USD. I, I, I'm not too familiar with the Euro, but that, that feels right. You, usually when people donate in uh, different currencies, it turns out it's a little smaller than it appears. So it's probably, let's say it's a dollar USD. Thanks a lot, Triple X, for the dollar. That's super kind of you. That is very, very nice. I really appreciate it. So the collaboration is a natural framework that will eventually take hold and get things somewhat back on track. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's inevitable. I mean, you, the, if people are working to a design vision, there's, it's going to narrow down. It's going to narrow down. There, there, you, the nature of the collaborative ideas is going to be that's it, that isn't it, that's it, that isn't it, that's it, that isn't it. What's all this? Huge Steven, big amount of money. It's like 120 USD, bruh. You guys think I'm fucking stupid or something? I know you guys are fucking with me. <laughs> Dude, this is not my first rodeo. I know how the internet works. It's very cute that you guys are all like picking up on the mimetic charge of the moment. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's trick Steven into thinking that it's a lot of money. It's like, guys, I'm a millennial, all right? I got the internet pretty young. I know how the whole thing works. I know you're messing with me. So just quit your little game. Just quit it. <coughs> Easy. Oh, there's my dog. I got a mute.
the sheer drama. The sheer drama of a dog when its owner comes home. The incredible power. Now, Triple X has donated a lot of money before. That's something, God damn it, let me. Now, I can't bring my focus back. Oh, I can't talk about Triple X if I don't have five Please, please, please. Just focus on me. All right, I'll do. Fine, I'll do it myself. I got to click on this. I got to launch this freaking thing. Yeah. Camera controls, focus, not auto. Going to manually lock it over here. All right. All right, as I was saying, Triple X has donated a lot of money before. Now, I don't know what Triple X's life looks like. I'm gonna assume that it involves a lot of hardcore sexual activity. I, there's really just, I can't, I mean, there's no other assumption I could make based on Triple X's username, right? I mean, I've, I've got a shallow slice here and that's all I can use to make a determination about Triple X. Which is why when Triple X says something to me like, dance for me, I can really only take that with a kind of um, objectifying valence that makes me deeply uncomfortable. Deeply, deeply uncomfortable. Maybe it wouldn't if there was like an intimate relationship kind of a thing going on between me and Triple X. Maybe if um, we shared some vulnerabilities with each other, you know? quiet moments, soft caresses, things like that. But as it stands, with a username like that and a presumed life of hardcore sexual activity, the kind of dancing that we're talking about, you don't come back from this, you know? It defines you. And things only, only get worse from there. You see, now, now I'm having money thrown at me much the way people throw money at strippers. And uh, it's difficult, difficult to deal with, you know? I mean, Triple X is obviously the kind of person who walks around wearing clothes you can't ignore, maybe driving something that you can't ignore and they find little marks like me, right? And they flash those bills. And they try to control people like me. They try to control people like me. And the unfortunate thing about that is that everybody has a price. Everybody has a price. Absolutely everybody. And I do, I do. But like I said, this is the kind of dancing you can't come back from. It's the kind of dancing you can't come back from. Now I'm playing it all out of my head. Yeah. Yeah, the slow reveal. The gyrations of parts of my body that I take great pains to not reveal on stream. That's a permanent, permanent kind of situation. So I'm not gonna do that publicly. But um, Triple X, come find me. Come find me. Yeah. There is a heaven for genitals and I will take you there. If the price is right. If the price is right. My God, look at, damn, Triple X. 
If you want to control people with cash, look at all the people in chat who are ready to do anything for you. Oh my god. You should be throwing money at some of these people, Triple X. These are your marks. <laughs> Everybody in chat is willing to go. <laughs> is willing to do absolutely anything for you. They're willing to do absolutely anything for you. I do think I need also a kind of like worm thing for this world, so let me draw a worm too. <laughs> I'll do it for free, says Sancia. Steven, just do it. Swear we won't screen record. Oof. Don't go swearing things like that. Don't make promises you can't keep. The problem is you haven't seen my dance. You think now, 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 here's the problem. In your mind, you're imagining a dance you could do. You can't do the dance that I'm, that all of my mirror neurons are preparing right now. You think because you imagine your dance. I don't have to screen record that. Oh my God. But if you saw, ooh, ooh, you'd change your mind. You'd say, I didn't know it could be like that. And you'd hit screen record immediately. But that's not for you. It's just not for you. That's between me and Triple X. Triple X, patron saint of money and hardcore sexual activity. We've seen dancing, Steven. You can't fool us. You, mm, mm. you have not seen even a tenth of my power not seen even a tenth of my power. The dancing that you have seen, oh my God. Restricted within the bounds of the green screen. You can't see my feet. <laughs> you have no idea. You have no idea what I'm capable of. And that's how I like it. When I fight a man for real, I don't want him to know what I can do. Well said. He said feet. God. God, I love drawing. Is there anything more fun than drawing? Drawing's the best. Can you imagine the experience of my poor wife? She comes home 
I'm at the door and I go, keep the dog, can you just keep the dog a little quiet because I'm streaming. And then I go back in my room and she hears me going, triple X, there is a heaven for genitals and I will take you there. I mean, you guys haven't, the dance I'm gonna do for triple X. <laughs> my poor wife. I mean, these walls are paper thin. She could absolutely hear that. Could you <laughs> imagine what it's like for her? That's so funny to me. It's this. It's the seriousness that was on my face when I told her, like, I'm I'm streaming, so I'm just gonna. Can you just keep it a little quiet? The seriousness on my face to then <laughs> hear that I go back in the room and do that is killing me. I find that very funny. Steven, you should start drawing on OnlyFans. There are probably many triple X's there. What has the world become? What have I become? Wonder how many artists have danced for triple X before? I imagine that the list of conquests is very long. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna fancy a guess and say that a lot of your heroes are on that list. Nick says, don't know if you ever watched it, Steven, but give the Naked Gun movies a try. Leslie Nielsen's Stone Face while saying absolute absurdities may be something for you. I've never seen them. I should. My wife and I watched uh, The Prince of Egypt last night. Hadn't seen it in years, not since I was a kid, or not not since I was a kid. I, I watched it in college at some point, and I watched it when I was a kid, of course, but damn. That is a great movie. And so, so, special 
as an animated movie, like a mainstream animated movie that a lot of people would say is for kids. It's like, there's so much special stuff in that that can only happen because it's um, a biblical story. Like it has hard points that they need to hit to honor the biblical story. You couldn't make a kid's movie like that if that wasn't the case. The main character kills a guy as the midpoint of his character arc. Can you say that about any other animated movie protagonist? He murders somebody. <laughs> That's wild. That is wild. It's at least manslaughter. It's at least manslaughter. Ayub says, how are you doing, Steven? I'm good. Had a nice relaxing holiday. I would say I'm still in a rest mode. Trying to recuperate my energies. I'm gonna... And, uh, eh. I haven't drawn for long enough. I was thinking of getting my drawing board and leaning my drawing up so that it has less glare on it, but eh. We've already been going for a while. Papa Gurney turns a floppy disk into a hard drive. He is a man of many layers, the one, the only, the trifecta, Triple X, AKA James Gurney. What lore are you all embroidering? <laughs> Onto my sweet sugar daddy, Triple X. <laughs> don't, don't go around. <laughs> <It's so cute>. <clears throat> I'm saying it's probably not a good idea to go around the internet accusing legendary artists like James Gurney of being cash stack flashing uh, degenerates who go around on YouTube streams and pay art streamers to shake their shit in public. So I, I just, it doesn't, maybe, you know, you want to be careful. You want to be careful about saying that about people. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing?
What to do if I feel like I am stuck in an art style I don't really like? I want to draw in a sort of comic style, but my drawings keep ending up on the realistic side. Um, I mean, it only ever takes more time with the look. There's, there's something to be said about sort of where your hand naturally goes. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discount what naturally comes out of your hand. Um, probably what you're going to want to do in your mature future is blend the style that you think you want, and that is to say the comic style, with what naturally comes out of your hand. So you'd want to find a way to integrate some of that realism into the comic style. Usually for most people, it's not sustainable to fight what naturally comes out of their hand for very long. You can do it for a while. In fact, you can establish a career off resisting it, but on a long enough timeline, years out, almost everybody goes back to what their natural inclination is. Martine says, could you explain to us how you earn your income, Patreon courses, etc.?" cetera? Um, if you look at the past um, year and a half of my life, it would be uh, courses, um, specifically my Form for Imagination course. That would be the vast majority of my income. But um, if you were to look at my whole career, it's design jobs, design jobs. Um, a few, maybe, all told, it's probably so I've been, doing, I've been doing it for about 12 years now. So if we take off the past two years where I've been focusing on education, let's say it was a decade, probably if you add up time spent just at studio, it's probably five years with working just for one place, working with a studio, and then the other five years are all freelance, doing jobs that I pick up here and there, stringing them together. Do you think it's possible to nail any character design no matter the style? I don't know what you mean by that. You mean if you're doing fan art or if you're designing something? Am I the only one noticing that the AI hype train is slowing down? How you doing? What do you want for dinner? Should we just do leftovers? Yeah, I did. You working or are you just hanging out? Oh shit. All right, then I'm gonna hop off in like 10 minutes. Let's hang out. Um, I wanna go talk to my wife. So I'm gonna stay on till uh, five. So like another 10 minutes and then I'm gonna hop off. So I will try to answer questions before I go. Let's see. Am I the only one, oh, that's right, I was reading this. Am I the only one noticing that the AI hype train is slowing down? Maybe it's just on sleep since the inevitability of it. I don't know, maybe it's slowing down. There's a, cause a lot of stuff happens behind the scenes too, if you're plugged in. There, there's the, the overall public hype feeling and then there's what the companies are planning on their own and things like that and you know, if we're not, privy to that, then I think it's a little, little un, it's a little uninformed of us to say, based on the public perception, like, oh, the hype train's dying down. It's like, is it really dying down if they're cooking something that they're gonna release and it's gonna redo the hype train? But I do think people are every day taking it more and more serious that uh, this is not as um, an invincible an industry 
as they would like you to think. Uh, just today it came out that the New York Times is suing OpenAI for um, using their stuff to train ChatGPT. I mean, that is great news, great news. Every time a huge institution, a big company jumps on board and says, you know what, we're gonna litigate this too, that's good news for us. And damn, I mean, the New York Times um, case, if you read what they're alleging, you know, was used to their material, their unique and valuable works were used to train models that are then going to compete directly against them and take away money and attention from them. It's the exact same argument um, for all intents and purposes that artists are making. So, ooh, it just, it bodes very well. It bodes very well. And I hope that the, uh, really pro AI people who like to say that um, the viewpoint that artists has, that artists have, that we should get consent, credit, compensation, transparency, control of our work, all of the things that we rightfully want. Um, they try to say that that's not a mainstream position, that we're crazy for wanting that. It's like, that, it's just very, things like the New York Times suing OpenAI are going to show that, which is already obviously true, but it's just gonna make clear that no, it is not at all a weird thing to want or desire and that it is a mainstream position to think, hey, what you guys are doing is completely fucked up. <laughs> that anyone to whom this happens, not just individual artists, but big companies with lots of lawyers who must have very good reason to think they could win if they're going to begin litigation, uh, everybody who has had this done to them would think so. Steven, art advice on how to handle growing aspirations when the feeling that we haven't peaked art-wise grows bigger and we grow dissatisfied with where we are and want a major change, improvement or departure. I gotta be careful, because, all right, it's like, fun first. Always, right? Fun first. You gotta be having fun the whole time. You gotta be joyful the whole time. It's always a good idea if you're miserable, feeling grindy, feeling like you've over-disciplined yourself, you're not really enjoying what you're doing. It's always a good idea, no matter what period you're in, to go back and fix things and to find the joy and to have the fun. That said, if you have that and you've been able to get that system running and you feel that growing aspirations feeling, the burning desire to get better, and you feel like you know what better looks like, and you're dissatisfied with what you are, and you just, you could see that, that, that crest that you want to go over, buckle down and go for it. And do it while you've got the energy. And I, I think you don't wanna burn yourself out, right? But you wanna burn it hotter while you've got the energy. I think that that's a very, it's useful to go through these episodes where you increase the intensity and the verve and the drive and the desire and you, you burn it hot for a controlled period of time. I think that most of our improvement comes in bursts, right? But, and I'm saying this to you, Nick, because you've been around a long time and you've heard me say a lot of things. I know that I'd be saying something different if it was somebody else asking this question. Um, you've just gotta be prepared to do that in a healthy way where you know how to pull the brakes on it. You know where things are getting out of balance. You know it when you've gone too gritty and you're just grinding it out instead of really, really soaking in the fun of it, right? As long as you know how to do those calibrations, how to, you know, you're in the cockpit and you know that warning light comes on and you press that one and then that little thing needs to get flipped and you get the beep, beep over here and you're like, you're just tapping these buttons over here to fix that beep, beep. As long as you're ready to do that, it's a great idea to burn it hot. Get the improvement while you've got that energy because everything ebbs and flows. That energy is not gonna be there forever. It's here now for a reason. There's a certain amount of 
clarity and alignment with your free time, with your temperament. It's there for a reason right now, so use it while you've got it. Use it while it's hot. Just, again, be ready to calibrate, control it, and don't burn yourself out, right? Always leave gas in the tank. Try to end every day knowing what you would do if you would keep going so that it's easy to start again the next day. And be more inclined to begin with your creativity and study second half of the session, those classic things that I advise. Again, I feel comfortable saying that to Nick because Nick has been around a long time. I know he has heard a lot of the shit that I have to say about keeping it fun and keeping it joyful. If it was someone who I didn't know, had no, had, had never had a conversation with, and, uh, then I would be giving different advice. I would say, be careful about that. It's, are you having fun? You gotta focus more on the fun. But um, once you do have a grip on that, letting it rip is fun. <laughs> letting it rip is fun and you improve really quickly. It's good. Samuel says, really lame that visual artists were screaming from the rooftops early on, but now people are paying attention when actors, writers, and others speak up. It's, you know, we can't, we can't get in our feelings about that. Yeah, you know, our artists are used to being ignored, or at least we should be. It's just, whatever gets the job done, any attention on the topic is better than no attention on the topic. So it's all right, it's all right. Hello, Tet. Tet, Tet, all right. It's about time I start signing off. So I'm just gonna lightning round a few things. Big fan here. Says Jali, two questions. One, I'm creating a comic and will send the first issue to publishers. How can I protect my ideas from being stolen? Two, can Red Diamond Man make a small cameo in the comic? Um, Red Diamond Man can make a small cameo in the comic. Um, as to number one, I'm not super experienced with this because I, I don't pit, pitch to publishers. Maybe I will in the future, but um, I don't have much personal experience. So be aware that I'm probably talking out of my ass here. But if you are pitching to a bigger publisher, they, they're they just as worried about being accused of stealing ideas as you are of your ideas being stolen. So. They, you know, you can read it in, in their submissions page and stuff like that. They will beg you, like, don't, don't, don't send us stuff if you think there's anything like that going on. They're like, we're not going to read it. We're going to burn it. We don't want to know. Like, they don't want the legal liability of stealing an idea, right? They're worried about that. And the best big publishers are, they have good systems for controlling that. That's the first thing to remember. And the second thing to remember is if you have a really good idea, it's clear to another creative person that it's you who needs to do the idea. So ask yourself, what publishers want for a really good idea, they want a new good idea to be done as well as possible. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to steal your idea and give it to someone who doesn't care. If you're new, if you're untested, market forces are going to apply. They're gonna pay you less than someone who is tested and legendary in the industry or something like that. So the economics work out for them. If you are pitching a really great idea, most real legitimate big publishers are much more inclined to just hire you to deliver it than to steal it from you. It makes much more sense for them to just say, hey, this is genuinely good. You clearly know what you're doing. This is what we're gonna pay you to come and do it, right? So I really wouldn't worry about it. I think, um, there are so many artists out there who worry about their ideas being stolen and it actually happens super rarely. I'm not gonna say it doesn't happen. There's, there's a few, there's some clear cases where it really did happen, but it is not common. It is really not common. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. I would shop, you know, it. obviously be more cautious if you're pitching it to small publishers, that is to say one or 
one person or a few people who claim to be a publisher and they really don't have a lot under their belt, they don't have a track record, they don't have an air of professionalism, that's different, right? But if you're pitching to a dark horse, to an image, something like that, they don't want to fuck with people. It's bad business and it leaves them open to huge legal liability. They, they, they're desperate for good ideas from genuinely good creators. And if you actually have that, they are happy to pay you to do it. <laughs> they, or, you know, to pay to distribute the product and think that they have some money to make on the other side. You know, different publishers do different kinds of things. But um, yeah, it just, it doesn't make much sense economically for them to steal your idea and give it to someone who doesn't care about it to turn it into mincemeat. It's like anyone with any creative experience knows that a, that's a bad idea. So I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. All right, everybody, on that note, I am going to run. Um, thank you everybody for being here. And thank you for listening to me rant. And thanks for doing any drawing that you might have been doing along with my drawings here today. Those are my three guys from today. Damn, it's very fun to draw. And God, I just love the silvery look of pencil. It's so fun. Um, it takes a long time, but damn, pencil's fun. I love it. Goodbye to Froggy. Goodbye to Brian. Goodbye to Saman. Brian says, what art paper are you using? This is this one. Strathmore 400 series bristle paper smooth. There is the info. I use this paper all the time. It's my personal favorite. It's too smooth for a lot of people. That comes down to personal preference. People tend to like either smooth paper or rough paper and the other one drives them crazy. So there's a vellum version of this that is toothier. Um, you gotta try them out. You gotta try them out. I prefer smooth paper. I got more of these to do, so maybe we'll do more of these uh, on the next stream. JB says, Stephen, do you think a medium can do a lot of the heavy lifting to the discredit of an artist? I really like what I do digitally, but worry it's not me, it's my tablet, brushes, and program. It's not as big of a problem as you think. You're, you're, the medium can't do that much of heavy lift. You, it's like, if you're, if you're trying to lay brush strokes, if you're trying to create value scales, if you're picking colors on your own, if you're doing anything short of tracing, photo compositing in a way that is artless, right? If you're doing anything short of that, digital is not helping you that much. You still need to make good design decisions. So it's still mostly your skills. Don't worry about that. Do you have a day in mind for the next live? Uh, God, what day? Today's Wednesday. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, not Friday. All right, everybody. Thanks again for being here. Have a wonderful day. Good luck with your art and I will see you soon.